Start off by placing a blank emitter on the stage and renaming it. Then right click and head into the properties. Under the particles tab, turn on intense and change the particle angle to random. In the change shape tab, select the flame tip shapes and make active. Slide the frame stepping to off and check the random start frame box. Now each particle will start with one of the three different shapes instead of cycling through them. Let's go ahead and rename the particle type Flames. We'll increase the life graph to about 20 and the life variation up to around 5. We're going to need a lot of particles, so we'll increase the number to about 100. We'll also bump up the number variation a bit so that the amount of flames being born isn't so static. Size can go up to around 45 or 50. If each particle looks too big right now, that's okay. We'll fix that up later in the size over life graph. Also turn up the size variation graph to about 15. We'll keep the velocity relatively low, at about 15, so that the particles move away slightly from the emitter, but not too far. Most of the motion for the emitter will come from the weight. Set it to a negative so that it rises, about negative 45 should do fine. Now our particles are flying off into the air. Increase the weight variation to add a little randomness to that. We won't touch the spin at all, but we will increase the spin variation by a lot. This will get the particles spinning in both directions, rather than just one way. 80 should do fine. Increasing the motion randomness will give the emitter just a bit more chaos. We'll adjust the size over life graph by making the particles get a little bit bigger as they get about a third of the way through their life and then shrinking them down as they die off. For velocity over life, we'll drop some keyframes into a zigzag pattern so that the particles speed up and slow down a little. Now it's time to adjust the transparency and color. First, click the Use Full Gradient Radio button so that you can add some keys into the transparency tab. Start with a black key that moves quickly into white and stays white until just before the end of its life. Now the particles will begin to fade out as they reach the tip of the fire. For the color, set three keyframes the first a medium orange and the next two slightly darker tones of orange. Using record position, draw a path to check out the motion of the fire. It's still missing one ingredient though, motion blur. Enter the project settings and turn it on to get the full effect of the flames. Right now the fire simply burns off and vanishes. To leave a burning path behind, convert the emitter into a super emitter. The fire starts heading off in all directions, so set the F velocity to zero. That now leaves a trail behind, but just about all the detail of the flames are lost. Open up the flame particle type and drop its number down to around 20. 
And there you go, the final flame effect.